Well, hi, everyone. Um, I'm Ward Detweiler, I'm the host of Great Lakes Now, and I am honored to be joined today by Dr. Karen Murchie, who is the Director of Freshwater Re Research at the Shedd Aquarium in Chicago. And today we are going to be hearing from her about a uh, maybe a fish that doesn't quite get as much attention as maybe it should, uh, and that would be suckers. This is something that I know I encounter as a fisherman in the rivers and is something that's uh, never something you're really out looking for, but maybe we'll get a little bit of a different perspective on that today. So. Dr. Murchie, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. So I guess just to start off, tell us about suckers. Where do they live? What do they eat? And, and why are they important? Sure. So suckers are really a group of fishes in the Great Lakes. They're native species. Um, you can find them most often in the large lake basins themselves. All five of the Great Lakes have suckers. Um, there's a number of species. But the most abundant are white suckers and long nose suckers, and those are the ones you're most often going to encounter. Um, they are benthivores, so they've got their mouths uh, at the bottom of their faces, and they're eating food off the bottom of the lakes and rivers where they hang out. Anything from little insects, tiny crustaceans, uh, and clams and algae. And um, what they do is a, a lot of important stuff. Um, they're food for a lot of different species, fish that people like to catch, like walleye and bass. Um, but then they also move nutrients around um, as they move from habitat to habitat. So they play a really important role, not just you know, on their own as a species, but really in kind of making all of these other species healthy and, and thriving in the lakes as well. Absolutely. I, I would basically say that if I were to have an award show for fishes, I'd give them an award for best supporting fishes, um, not only being like food for other um, fish, but they also can be food for birds like ospreys and herons and loons and eagles. Um, and some small mammals will take them as well. Um, but yeah, in the springtime in particular, when they move into the creeks and rivers to spawn, they're basically adding a buffet of nutrients um, that aquatic insects, the little bugs, um, take up and they get bigger because of that food that those suckers are providing. And those aquatic insects then um, feed other fish, or if they don't get eaten, then they hatch and become things like caddisflies and dragonflies, and those in turn feed birds and bats. So it's this whole amazing... Um, role that the suckers have to play, not only in feeding other fish, but um, also supplying nutrients in the springtime right after ice off um, to all these other organisms. So they're super cool. Now, in this effort, you use a lot of, of uh, volunteers in your research. Can you tell us what citizen scientist is and what these volunteers mean to your research efforts? Yes, I am so excited to share what the community scientists or citizen scientists bring to the table. If somebody's interested in participating in this study, we want to know, are, is there a creek or a river close to where they live or work that's going to be convenient that has a known run of suckers? So something either they've noticed them in the past or maybe they're an angler already and, and they're aware of their presence in that location. We want it to be something that they can do easily and every day, basically starting not long after ice off and while snow is still melting, um, they're out looking in the creeks and saying, hey, are the suckers there yet? Nope. And recording the information on a printed data sheet. And they continue with that monitoring um, from when the fish show up and then documenting through to when they don't see them anymore for a number of days. So just getting a good kind of kind of sort of periodic account of how long they're here, here when they're here. Yeah, about a 10-minute observation period for somewhere around six to eight weeks often. Uh, we usually have people for the Lake Michigan tributaries. They're starting usually mid to late March and then continuing through a good chunk of April and sometimes early May. And then the start time for the Lake Superior tributaries is a little bit later just because of usually how much further behind the spring season is. Speaking of these being migratory fish, uh, I've heard a lot about dam removal projects that allow salmon to swim upstream to spawn, uh, but it sounds like suckers are also encountering obstacles around the Great Lakes too, right? I mean, are, are dams and culverts and other obstacles being modified or removed to help suckers? 
there is work that's being done to uh, allow passage of number of species and suckers uh, are included in that mix. We do think a lot of the times about dams being a major barrier from, for migration, but there's even way more culverts that could be barriers around the Great Lakes. So um, definitely work has been done in a number of locations uh, just north of the Shedd Aquarium up in Highland Park. There has been some um, culvert restoration activities that have happened that you know, after they've been completed, all of a sudden they started to see sh suckers show up for their spawning events. So that's been really cool. So hopefully by hearing this story and hearing about your work, maybe people might get interested and excited in becoming one of these uh, citizen scientists. How can people get involved in scientific research in their own communities? Absolutely. So um, whether you participate in the sucker research and documenting the timing of their spawning migrations around the Great Lakes through the work that we're doing at SHED. That's one great way of participating. But also, um, SHED had produced a Great Lakes Fish Finder app. It's something that you can download for free on both Android and iPhones. And it doesn't matter which species of fish you're encountering, you can log it. It's a project that's nested under the iNaturalist platform. A lot of people that are out doing, um, you know, bird surveys and stuff are using iNaturalist to either document or even ID any species of bug or plant or bird that they might not know. Um, the same thing can be done for the fishes that they see. So whether you're out angling and you catch a fish, you can log it. Even if it's under iNaturalist and not the Great Lakes Fish Finder app, they work hand in hand together. Um, to provide that information that scientists can use to see where different species are located. So there's a lot of different ways that people can participate in that sucker research or fishing uh, general. So outside of you know, the research side of it, what can regular people do to help preserve fish habitat? Yeah, I think some of the biggest thing is just being an active voice for our Great Lakes. Um, participating in, um, you know, talking to your local politicians about uh, making sure that the Great Lakes are clean and that we have healthy waters, not just for the fishes and other animals that live there, but also it's a drinking water supply for most people too. It's all connected. Healthy lakes mean healthy communities. So um, being advocates for all types of bills and policies that um, can make an impact on the Great Lakes. That's that's a really important step. So making sure your voice is heard uh, and, and knowing that you're interested in protecting these really important resources. We're so fortunate to be on such a, a wealth of water. Um, it's, it's a precious resource. Yeah, we certainly are. And uh... Hopefully this will help people uh, maybe look at something that was uh, an overlooked species in a little bit different way and realize how important it is. So I just want to say thank you so much, Dr. Murchie, for your time and for being here and helping to spread this message all over the lakes and beyond. Thank you so much, Ward. It was my pleasure. At Great Lakes Now, we aim to cover the Great Lakes region and the people who live here, like you. Please follow us on social media, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and sign up for our newsletter at greatlakesnow.org.